There is a right way and a wrong way to do everything in life. And sometimes people are misguided. And that's why they probably make a lot of the mistakes that they make. And then some people go overboard when it comes to everything. And then they wonder why things are not working out for them. It's because you don't know the method. You don't know which way to get it done. I'm Tyrone Bowman. This is Tyrone Bowman tonight. The topic of discussion. This evening, I'm going to begin a series of teachings on the topic or the subject matter entitled Right and Wrong Fasting. Right and Wrong Fasting. And during the course of this series, it is my intention to be able to inspire and to motivate you in a positive way to pursue with earnest, if you desire to fast, do it safely, do it correctly, and do it responsibly. Now on this evening, this is, going, this is an introduction to the lesson that I'm going to be talking about for the next couple of days. Hopefully it won't be long and drawn out. I'm going to try to keep it to a minimum of 15 minutes each time I come on the air. And also, I want to make sure that um, it's done in such a way that individuals understand the importance of why we do what we do. Also, if you happen to be passing by this channel, would you do two things? Would you like and subscribe? And you might not even necessarily like the content, but you might like some of the things that are being said. So would you kind of like, hit that like button for me and subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your enemies about Tyrone Bowman tonight. I'm looking for something that I want to talk about real quick before I get into uh, tonight's uh, inspirational, motivational teaching. actually had it here um, not too long ago. Give, bear with me. Give me a second. Uh, here it is. We'll talk about this real quick. For those of you that are pursuing the prophetic ministry, you must be prepared in order to achieve the, dire, the, pardon me, the desired results that you would like to have spiritually. And especially when you're imparting into the lives of others. Well, there's a place that you can go to. It's called the Higher Dimension School of the Prophets. Yes, Higher Dimension School of the Prophets. And if you'd like to become a part of the prophetic courses that they're having online, everything is online, simply go to www.schoolfortheprophets.com. That's www.schoolfortheprophets.com. And when you go there, register by providing your email address. And the email address will do, direct you to the link to get online for the classes. So it's Higher Dimensions, schoolfortheprophets.com. And now on to this evening's lesson, right and wrong fasting. Fasting is not a new principle. It's been around for thousands of years, believe it or not. It has been used uh, in many instances to achieve extraordinary results. And then others have been so destructive and they turn fasting into a ritualistic law. And in the end, instead of it helping people, it has ruined people. What is fasting? That's the first thing I'm going to define on this evening. What is fasting? In simple terms, according to the Google Dictionary, and I will we'll be citing different sources throughout this lesson, and I will let you know where I got all my information from. That's right. There's no need to play with this. This is not a game. I'm serious about talking about this topic because when individuals desire to fast, you want to make sure you're going to do it correctly. And oftentimes in religious uh, circles, and even in the world of Christendom, uh, at the beginning of every year, at least it's usually during the month of January, 
the pastors or the bishops or the apostles. They'll state the uh, the agenda for the year. Then they'll say, well, we're going to fast for a certain amount of protracted period of time. First of all, make sure you're doing things responsibly. If you are an individual, you're on heavy medication, you have no business going on a long protracted fast because it's going to hurt you. That is the wrong way to fast. So throughout this lessons, throughout these lessons, rather, I will get into a lot of uh, uh, things. I will answer a lot of questions that are probably on people's minds. Well, the word fasting is defined as abstain from all or some kinds of food or drink, especially as a religious observance. Example, abstain from food, refrain from eating, deny oneself food, go without food, go hungry, eat nothing, <coughs> starve oneself, go on a hunger strike. You know, some people have actually gone on hunger strikes. Fasting is the willful refrainment from eating and sometimes drinking. Wow, I'll we'll leave it right there. Now, what is true fasting? And there have been several books that have written that have been written on fasting from a medical perspective. And if some of if you'd like to get some of them, just go to your local library or go online and look up different topics and subject matters for yourself. And you'll be able to find out just from reading from a scholarly, scholarly point of view exactly how fasting can be done medically. Sometimes people do fasting under medical supervision, which is always wise. What is the true meaning of fasting? Fasting, abstinence from food or drink or both for health, ritualistic, religious, or ethnic purposes. The abstination may be complete or partial, lengthy, of short duration, or intermittent. That's according to the Google Dictionary. Did you know that there are, well, let's talk about what is biblical fasting. You know, a lot, a lot of people really want to fast and they, you know, they're trying to figure things out for themselves. And many times they don't have answers. Well, biblical fasting is nothing more than going through scripture and you find out scripturally exactly what certain individuals did for fasting. And I'll be talking about probably about five of them in a moment. And I will give you scriptural references that you'll be able to go to for yourself. Always remember, don't take anyone's word for anything. Do your own homework. Do your own research. Do your own studying. Take out the time to make sure that you are well informed about a subject matter before any type of undertaking occurs in your life. Find uh, examples of uh, why things happen. So biblical fasting is basically according to what the Bible says. So fasting according to the Bible means to voluntarily reduce or eliminate your intake of food for a specified time and purpose. When you give up eating, don't put on a sad face like the hypocrites. I'll be getting into more about what Jesus said. They make their faces look sad to show people they're giving up eating. It is wrong to undertake a spiritual matter that's supposed to really be shrouded with secrecy between Almighty God and the individual or individuals that are fasting. Some people like to go about and sound a trumpet yeah, they like to sound a trumpet. They want everyone to know that they're fasting. They want people to feel sorry for them because they're not eating. If you want to be biblically correct, it is a private matter. As a matter of fact, that brings me to scripture. So since I'm here, <laughs> let's go there, okay? No, I'm not going to read from the King James Version of scripture. I'm going to read from the NIV or the, or the New International Version of scripture. According to the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, let's find out what the Christos had to say. Messiah. 
find out what Jesus had to say on the matter. In the sixth chapter, the gospel according to Matthew, and Jesus was well able to talk about this and teach concerning it because he did it. According to the sixth chapter, verses, the 16th verse, I'll start with verse 16. When you fast or deny yourself or abstain from food, water, etc., do not look somber as the hypocrites do, or they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have their reward in full. But when you fast, who was he talking to? He was talking to his disciples. He was talking to individuals who were listening to him espousing and teaching about the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He said, but when you fast, you do this right here. Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your father who is, in, who is unseen or in secret. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you, the King James Version says, openly. It's a private matter. During the Civil Rights Movement, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and those who were involved in order to move the irresistible forces, the unseen powers, they would go on protracted fast for periods of time. And be very careful because when you are fasting, you open yourself up to an entirely different world. The world of the invisible, the world of the immortal, the world of the supernatural becomes even more real. Why? Because your body is weak. Now your senses are becoming more clear and spiritually your ears will open and you begin to be able to hear and in some instances, your spiritual eyes are opened. So make sure that you know what you're doing before you do it. This is an inspirational, motivational teaching. Sometimes fasting is good. It's good because it eliminates toxicity from the body. It can eliminate poison from the body. It eliminates all of the stuff, the garbage and the trash, that individuals don't need, it can cause it to be removed out of the body. Have you ever gone for blood work? What is the first thing they tell you? Go on a fast the night before. Do not eat anything for the next 24 hours. In other words, they were telling you to fast. Don't eat anything. Why? Because they want to find out exactly what is in your blood. And then that way, they would know how to analyze, to diagnose, and to treat you at the same time. So, and there are three types of fasting that an individual can, can undergo. Yeah, there are three types of fasting. Now, this is from a medical point of view. There's caloric restriction, nutrient restriction, and seasonal eating. You know, yeah, you can drink water while you're fasting. That's a good thing to do. Or you can even drink juice while you're fasting. Did you know that Moses, Elijah, and Jesus all have one thing in common? They all took an undertaking of a protracted fast. Did you know that? According to the Bible, Prophet Moses, as recorded in the book of Exodus, the 24th chapter and the 18th chapter, first, and recorded in the book of Exodus, the 34th chapter, and the 28th verse, Moses fasted on two occasions for 40 days and 40 nights. The first time he was fasting, it was on Mount Sinai. Yes, there he went to commune, to fellowship alone with Almighty Yahweh or Jehovah God. And there, he didn't eat any food or drink any water for 40 days and 40 nights. 
And there he received the Ten Commandments from Almighty God. On the second fast, Moses came down from the original fast. He found out that they had been given wholly over to paganism. Yep. Debauchery. Aaron, who had been chosen to be the high priest of the Most High, made them a golden calf. And Moses became angry and took the original commandments and he broke them and he <coughs> put it in their water and made them drink it. And then Moses went back to the presence of Almighty Yahweh and was fasting for another 40 days and 40 nights to receive the commandments of God again. Then there are reminders in the book of Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter, the ninth verse, the book of, the book of Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter, the 18th verse, in recounting what had taken place, Moses reminded them that on two occasions, yes, he fasted. Prophet Elijah, as recorded, in the first book of Kings, or first Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 5 through 8, an angel of Jehovah God came to Moses, came to Elijah, and told him that you're about to go on a great journey. The journey before you is great. Rise up and eat. And he went on the strength of that food for 40 days and for 40 nights. Jesus, in preparing for the ministry that was set before him, as recorded in the Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 2, and the Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 2. For 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus was in the wilderness. He was fasting and he was praying. And for 40 days, Jesus didn't eat any food. And then that's when the tempter came to him. Moses and Elijah didn't eat any food or drink any water during their protracted fast. In the book of Daniel, the young man who was greatly used by Almighty God fasted and prayed for 21 days and nights. Why? Because he was troubled. He was in agony, in disparity, regarding the state of Israel and regarding <laughs> what was going on with, with his people, the nation. Have you ever come to a point in time in, in your life when you're just perplexed? Things can bother you. Things can upset you, and you don't know why. Sometimes, in order to get the answers that you need, you need you need to just dedicate a time for prayer and fasting. So in the next lesson, I'll be talking about Christian fasting. What does the Bible say? You know, is fasting necessary for today's Christian church? Is there a proper method of fasting? What are the benefits of fasting? And then I'll be quoting some things from a, a prayer and fasting guide by the late Dr. Bill Bright. He was the founder of uh, Campus Crusades for Christ. You know, I'll be talking about several things. So stay tuned for this most interesting teaching, uh, this, this inspirational motivation, motivational teaching series. You might find something that you might use something that could be of use to you. Remember this, there is a right and wrong way to fast. This series is entitled, Right and Wrong Fasting. Do it the correct way. Do it the safe way. Do it the biblical way. Don't listen to anything, anyone or anybody trying to bring you into a ritualistic law of bondage to try to let you think or believe that your salvation is intertwined with fasting. That is not true. Whether you fast or not has nothing to do with your religious conversion or being born again, as the evangelical Christians like to say. Never surrender, never quit.